Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to our next SFML tutorial. Today we're going to start looking at basic graphics. Uh, quite literally, we're going to be looking at primitive graphic shapes in SFML. Uh, but you'll actually learn that this is sort of um, a segue into dealing with sprites. The way that the SFML deals with graphics is very consistent and straightforward. So even though we're dealing with basic shapes in this uh, particular tutorial, uh, coming forward you'll see what we're learning here is invaluable and it keeps the complication of having to load external files and such out of the equation for now. So that's why I'm starting with shapes first. And then in the next tutorial, we'll move on to sprites um, and then go from there. Uh, so as I said, we're going to be looking at uh, basic graphics today. Uh, we're going to jump right in with an example here. Uh, right now in front of you, you can see the very typical um, skeleton application that we've been using until this point. Uh, just like all the other tutorials, first off, I assume you have watched the previous ones or you are aware of the content of each one of those. So if you have not, uh, be sure to check those out before continuing this one because I'm not going to recap stuff we've already covered. So I assume you've already got your development environment configured, you already know about the basic game loop, about input events, etc. So we're moving on from there. And again, just like always, there is a text-based tutorial of this as well that has all of the source code we're about to do available there. So don't worry too much if you don't keep up with the coding side of things. It's all available for download over on Game From Scratch. All right, I will link that in the comments below. Without further ado, let's continue on. So as I was saying, here's your very typical game loop that we've been using until now. Let's go ahead and run it, make sure we got everything right and configured. There it is, up and working, working great. So now the first thing we're gonna do is look at creating just a basic shape. Uh, very, very simple process. You'll see there's a lot of consistency to F SF eh, SFML. Um, in the way it does things. So once you learn how to do it one thing one way, doing other similar tasks is going to be very, very, very simple. Uh, that's actually the sign of a very clean, well done API. Uh, so first off, let me start by making a circle shape. And these are from the graphics header. Uh, so circle shape, and we shall dub the circle shape. And really all you're passing it in is the radius. So we'll make it 200 pixel radius, so 400 total width. Um, and last, let's just give that circle shape a color. So circle shape dot set fill color and SF colon colon color colon colon. And we shall make the uh, blue like so. And that's it. We just created our first ever shape in SFML. The next thing up is to actually draw it. And that is done here. Uh, circle shape like so. And that's it. All of your drawing is done the same way, and there's a reason behind that. All of these classes, circle shape, uh, shape, which circle shape inherits from rectangle shape, sprite, uh, font, etc., or sorry, text, um, they all inherit from the same base class called drawable. And you pass in anything that's drawable, as we see if we hover here, the first parameter to draw is a drawable object. So regardless to what we're working with, you draw it the same way, simply by passing it into the window you want it to render. Now, again, the order here is very important because this clears the frame of the drawing from the last frame, and then this one causes your new changes to be displayed. So the order that they're shown in is important, especially if you have some animation going and you're not clearing the screen, you'll get basically a smearing effect. So you do have to clear the frame. Each frame, you have to clear it, make your drawing changes, and then display the changes you've made, which is exactly what this process here does. I think I'm running in the wrong setting here. Let me just, come on. I'm sure we're using yeah, all of my juice. Okay, so let me just go ahead and run this. And that's not what I want. Okay, what is the issue here? Circle shape is blue. Event loop, render window clear, draw, display. Hmm. One second then. Oh, okay, that's some kind of stupid. Maybe I should actually put this code inside of the event loop. <sighs> All right, that's a little bit smarter. So if you saw my error there, uh, basically, uh, I had our rendering code outside of our main game loop, which is kind of a stupid thing to do because it's never going to be called until your program actually goes to exit. So now that the uh, render loop render code is actually in the right spot, let's go ahead and draw this now. And there you go. There's the results. 
our blue um, sphere or circle with its 200 radius is being drawn. Now there's a couple of key things to be noticed here. Um, and the key thing is the concept of origins or where our drawable is drawing relative to. And in this case, it's drawing at the origin, which is zero, zero. So zero X and zero Y. In that case, that is this location right here at the top left corner of your uh, window. Now you'll find if you've done any OpenGL programming or used a couple of other um, 2D game libraries, such as, for example, Cocos, um, they follow the, the OpenGL of the bottom left corner while direct draw, direct X, use the top left corner, and almost every single windowing UI widget library uses the top left corner. It's kind of a matter of opinion, but it's probably about a 50-50 split between which way people do things, but SFML has the origin at the top left corner, which is to say, when you say zero, zero, that's top left, whereas um, zero and comma width would be top right, etc. cetera. Um, now, another key thing to understand is that the um, our shape itself is drawn relative to its top left as well. So you see we're drawn here, but when we say zero, zero for our, or set the position of our um, circle shape here, it's being drawn to the top left corner. Now I'm gonna give a quick update on how that works. Let me just, first off, I'm gonna be showing you how to actually um, set the position here. So by default, we just took the default by default, we took the default. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but we use the default values there, which are zero and zero. So if we want to have it at a different location, we just do a set position. And actually, I think we have a second constructor here. Yes, we do. So we can pass in uh, float values. Um, and I've never really understood why SFML uses float for pixel coordinates, which is a little confusing uh, because you can't really have a fractional pixel. Uh, but regardless, so you do have to have floats here, otherwise you'll get a lot of warnings about loss of precision. Uh, but let's set it to 100 and 100, like so. So what this is going to do is draw our shape 100 to the right, 100 down. But again, it's relative to the top left corner of the shape itself. And it could be that you don't want to have this behavior, and that is easily fixed. So what you need there is to use something called the origin. So what we're gonna do on our circle shape then is set origin, like so. And this is basically saying, where is our object transformed relative to? What is the pivot point or the origin of the shape itself? And this is particular to the shape and nothing else. So let's set it to um, its midpoint. So this is in local coordinates in pixels within or as an offset from the top left corner of our local shape. So we're saying the handle transforms on this shape this far off of its top left corner. And what we're gonna do then is get the radius, which is obviously half of its width. So we can do circle shape dot get radius and then circle shape dot get radius. So what we've done there is set the origin to the center point of our graphic. And now when we run this code, and here I'll move this back to zero zeros because it becomes even more obvious what's happening here. Like so, now let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see our drawing is now done relative to the center point of the drawable. Uh, drawable is uh, the base class, as we mentioned earlier, of everything that can be rendered by the render window or a, a window derived class. So that is the origin, very key concept. Now, if you want to do it to the top left, the bottom left, or the center, there's arguments for any of them, but this is easily switched between. So now, another thing, um, in this case, we have a radius, but if we were just dealing with a sprite or uh, a rectangle or a polygon or such, what we probably want to do to calculate the midpoint is do this a little bit different. And there's another easy way to calculate what the midpoint is if you don't have a radius. And that is by checking its local bounds. So this is a bounding box that basically defines what the shape, like it's a bounding box around the shape and local coordinates. So let's say get local bounds dot. Right. Why is IntelliSense being stupid? Oops. Zero, what am I doing? 2.0F comma. Get local. All right, IntelliSense is back. Welcome back. And 
closed like that. So we can also set the origin this way. Same result. Okay, so if you're not, if you don't have radius handy, all you're really doing is calculating the midpoint of your shape. So that's another option there. Uh, get local bounds, as I said, basically is a bounding box around your shape in local coordinates. Um, so either of those can be used to set your pivot up or your origin up. And now let's just get rid of all that. Uh, this line is redundant and we'll stick with blue. Okay, so that's a single basic shape. Now let me show you something that's kind of important for understanding how rendering works. Now what we're gonna do is create circle shape two. And we're gonna have this sort of slightly offset so that they don't completely obscure each other. Like so. And let's make it a different color. Like so. So now we have two shapes, uh, both circles, same size, etc. cetera. Uh, one's offset 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down uh, relative to the other one, or relative to the origin technically. but. Now we're just going to go ahead and draw our second shape here. And there's an important thing to see here. So our first shape as we drew here is blue. Our second shape as we drew here is red. And here is our end result. The red shape overrides or overwrites the blue shape in entirety. And that's the important lesson to learn here is the order that shapes are drawn in is the order that they are rendered and how they will draw over top of each other. And this is going to get more important in a bit when we are actually talking about spl with sprites that can have transparencies um, and texture blending and such. So the draw order that you make these calls in is important uh, to how things are rendered on screen. And you can basically think of it, the last drawn is the last rendered. So if we've gone down here and we just change this order around, like so, you will now see that the red shape is being obscured by the blue instead. So the order that these draw calls appear is very important to how the shape turns out in the end. Uh, so that's kind of the basis of it. Let's go back to a single shape. I wanna show a few more things about shapes before we move on. So that we no longer need you. And this is, this is not just true for shapes or same times of shapes. It's any drawable, the order that they're drawn in is important to the order that they're displayed on. So if you draw a sprite over top of a circle, the um, circle underneath will be obscured, whereas vice versa, the sprite would then be obscured. So draw order, very, very important concept to get your head around. Um, in some parlance or game engines, this is called a Z index or Z order. Um, so if you come from a different background, that's kind of where you're, what you should be looking at. So now I wanna show you just a little bit more about what you can do with a shape here, and that is the outline. So circle shape dot set outline. And we can set the color, uh, so we're blue here, we'll call this, we'll make this white. So this is the line that's drawn, used to draw the actual shape itself. And we can also set the thickness of said line. And that's outline thickness, like so. And we'll set it to 10 pixels. And run that. And to da So you now see that our shape has a 10 pixel um, white, line as its outskirts. Uh, optional if you use this or not. Um, the default again is the same as this, basically. Like so. Uh, so that's a little bit on what shapes can do. There's not a whole lot more to cover there, but there are other shape options that I've not even talked about. Um, the two other key ones are probably SF rectangle or SF polygon. Uh, and then there's SF convex shape. And convex shape is and the other two work exactly as you'd expect them to, very similar to circle, though obviously you use dimensions as opposed to a radius when defining it. Whereas convex shape is a little bit more complicated. Convex shape or um, convex polygon is a sequence of line segments that never intersect each other and where the individual angle is never more than 180 degrees. Um, and the way you define them is as a series of points. Basically think of like an etch-a-sketch where you're connecting the dots between them. So your order is very important. You either need to define them in clockwise or counterclockwise order, but you're basically just defining where each of these points exists. And let me now instead show you that. So SF convex shape, once again, this is a drawable. 
uh, we'll call the convex shape. And right off the hop, instead of point count, but I'm not gonna bother. So we're gonna do that in code instead. So convex shape dot, why are you angry at me? Let's get that, come on, set. I'm not gonna tell us that set point count. So basically now we're gonna tell it, and this could have been done in the constructor, but now we're going to tell it uh, how many points to compose our shape. So I'm gonna start with five. And what I'm just gonna do is pretty much make uh, a rectangle that goes about the um, boundaries of our screen, but for the last bit. So it'll go from the top left corner to the top right corner to the bottom right corner, and then to the midpoint, and then to the bottom left corner and then close. So that's the shape we're defining here. And we just kind of do it as a series of points, very simple. So first we tell it how many points like we just did here. Uh, I guess we should give it some flair. So convex shape dot set fill color. And I've been using built-in colors for all of my examples. Instead, I'm just gonna define one with an RGB value. An RGB value is red, green, blue. Uh, value from 0 to 255 representing the fullness of each channel. So uh, 255 comma 0 comma 0 would be 255 red with no green or no blue making it fully red, etc. So in this case, we're actually going to create purple. Uh, so 147, 112, and 227. Okay, so that sets the color. Set outline. Pick. Oops. Convex shape. Dot set. Cannot type today convex shape that set out line thick thickness. Three sounds good. And convex sh shape set fill oh, outline. And SF colon colon color colon colon. So what we've done is we're saying we're making a five point shape, make it purple, uh, outline it with three pixels wide of white. And now let's define our shape. As I said earlier, we're gonna go up around the bounds of the screen and then to the midpoint. Uh, so first convex shape. Yeah, so each one you do set point and you pass in the index of the point you're modifying. This is where that uh, clockwise or counterclockwise order comes in important. So our first point and each one is a vector 2f. This one is going to be at the origin of the top left corner. And through the power of cut and paste programming, I'm going to probably make an error, but it happens. So one, two, three, four. These are the five points that are going to make up our shape. And then the sixth point is going to be where it closes itself, going back to zero. Uh, so second point, we want it to go to the top right corner of the screen. Now, remember when I said SFML is a very clean API? This is one of the blemishes. Uh, so we get the size of our window, and unfortunately, get size returns X and Y, which is, it should be width and height. It's kind of a ew, uh, but it's a pretty minor one. So, uh, okay, so that's the far right top corner. And now we want to get uh, bottom right corner. think. Now we're going to get a bunch of yells at us here because get size is an int. Now where is this coordinate? It should be a float. All right. I'm right here. Yeah. Okay. So now we want to go midpoint. Yeah, we'll actually. Simply do that. Of course, we've got to update the index. And then finally, the bottom left corner of our screen, which should be 0x and under window.get size. Uh, well, let's see if my math is correct here. Should be. So finally, instead of our circle shape, then we need to draw a back guide there and run. And as you see, here is our shape drawn from here to here here, here, to here, and up. Now, important thing you're seeing here, though, is your line thickness isn't applying to the top left corner because the 
Um, the three pixels of line are actually here and here and here accordingly. So you'd have to offset your shape slightly in order to see all the lines. So you're really only seeing these two edges because the rest of it's off screen. Uh, but that's it. That's basic graphic drawing in SFML. Um, quite simple. Everything inherits from drawable and a drawable is passed into your render window draw call uh, like so. Again, the important thing to understand here is the origin. Um, you can set your drawing relative using the set origin call and all of your draw call goes in between the clear call and the display call and the order that you draw things is important for how they interact with each other whereas the last drawn thing will be the topmost item rendered over top of other things but basically that is it so i hope you enjoyed that if you stay tuned the next section will be on um, rendering sprites and you will find a whole lot of overlap between in fact it might be quick enough that we can actually get text into the next in, next one as well which you will also find is very 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 similar in functionality so there is a consistency to this API that is very clean and makes kind of an intuitive guess about where to go next very easy so while we're just dealing with very simple shapes here we have laid the foundation for much more interesting stuff to come in the next tutorial I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And once again, if you do enjoy the type of stuff that uh, we're putting out here in Game From Scratch, uh, please consider uh, helping us out on uh, Patreon. It's definitely appreciated. There will be a link below. Uh, again, stay tuned for the uh, sprite-based tutorial. It should be up any day now. And there is a link below in the comments to the text-based version of this if you are interested. Thank you very much.